All right, hello guys. We're out on a little uh, photo adventure this morning. It's kind of dark here. Uh, the adventure is catching the sunrise. That's why it's kind of dark. And we're going to meet up with uh, friend Stephen Anderson Lindsay from Stephen Anderson Lindsay Photography. And just uh, onward and upward. Okay, so I'm up here at the Grey Mountain Lookout in Whitehorse, uh, just hanging out for a couple minutes, uh, waiting for my buddy Stephen to show up. So it's still pre-sunrise here. Uh, I think we've probably got another 20 minutes or so till the sun starts peeking over the horizon. Um, we'll see what we can do. The higher up, we get some stunning views of the Yukon River Valley. Can start to see all the way down to where Carcross would be and towards uh, BC and into uh, down to Skagway, Alaska sort of area. That's where the gold rush came up through the Chilkoot Pass onto Bennett Lake and all that. So it's a, an area that's rich with history and it's just fun to be able to pop up on top of this mountain just at the spur of a moment, uh, just a few short minutes drive away from downtown Whitehorse and then you're in the middle of the wilderness. All right, uh, let's see. So we got some early morning light finally starting out here. We drove up, um, probably not halfway, but uh, a quarter of the way or 20% of the way or something up Heckle Hill. Grey Mountain. Grey Mountain. That's right. The coffee hasn't fully kicked in yet. Got uh, Stephen Anderson Lindsay here with me too. So say hello, Steve. Hello, everyone. All Looking right. forward to a strenuous hike up Grey Mountain. That's right. We cheated just a little bit with the truck here. But uh, we wanted to make sure we were going to catch the sunrise and some beautiful Yukon morning light here. And as you can see, it's already starting. So we're off, we're on our way, and look forward to sharing some of the results with you. All right, greetings from the top of Grey Mountain. We're at the summit here. Uh, maybe just to show you a little bit of what we're looking at. Got probably uh, Mount Lorne behind us there, and yeah, looking a little bit more south, down towards Marsh Lake, back over towards the other mountains on the other side there too. We'd have Carcross down to BC and into Alaska, uh, just commanding views here from the top of Green Mountain. But yeah, we've had a, a fun time thinking up, but I think we've got some great, great photos too. So. Uh, Let's see what we've got here. So we're back in from the cold. We're back down from Grey Mountain. And I've got my little photo editing partner there. I guess she's kind of not ready for vlog world, perhaps. And let's just see. Um, I think we're rolling right now. I've got the little Camtasia program. And it's going to bring us over into Lightroom just to take a look at some of the uh, the photos that we got on that trip. Just want to share some of the results. It was a great uh, a great early morning hike up Grey Mountain with uh, Stephen there, Stephen Anderson Lindsay, and uh, it was you know we cheated a little bit. It wasn't just a straight hike up to the top, but we were kind of in a little bit of a race against time to uh, catch the sunrise and put ourselves in a great location and take advantage of the light. Uh, and this first image really just want to. Uh, show you it really just kind of talks about that early morning light and maybe it's just a you know boring side of the mountain but I think when you're up north of 60 and especially here and Yukon one thing I've really been loving so far is just uh, you know everyone says oh the winters are so dark how are you gonna deal with it um, you know it's such a depressing time of year or something but far from it I think if you're a photographer or you're somebody that's always you know uh, chasing light or curious about sunrises and sunsets yeah, there's less light in the middle of December or in the middle of January, but the light that there is, it's just the longest lasting sunrises, it's constant sunrise, sunset, it's just beautiful. And we've got this wonderful pink light coming up from the south here on the side of Grey Mountain, and I thought that just really highlights some of the textures um, that we're seeing there. Next up, I think uh, on our on our hike up, we saw a little bit of wildlife, some birds around, and in particular, uh, Stephen noticed right away there were some ptarmigans in our path. 
Uh, I was pretty sure they were ptarmigan. Had to ask around a little bit later on just to find out exactly what type of ptarmigan they were. I think initially we just scared one off, but then we kept on hiking. And a little bit further up the mountain, kind of closer to the summit, we ended up seeing a whole flock of them and they were flying away and it was just uh, very beautiful. I just decided to spend a little bit of time and get off the road and wade into the snow a little bit and uh, decide to go tracking them. And thankfully that little bit of additional effort paid off and I got my second shot at getting a great uh, winter ptarmigan plumage kind of image here. And I had the D810 in the high continuous mode, so we're trying to take advantage and you know make sure I'm going to give myself the best chance possible to get a shot that I'll be happy with. Um, it's also using the Nikon 200 to 500 here without the teleconverter, just at the uh, I think this one, yeah, right at right at 500. And here I was probably about I'm going to say 30. 30 feet, 30, 40 feet away from the birds at this point, and this is at 500, and these are relatively small birds. So you can see that this really gets right in on them at 500, and this image has not been cropped at all. We had a few to play around with. Um, I've kind of narrowed down that selection already right here, but I just wanted to show you some of the, the thought process that goes into that. The second one here, again, was a potential. I just love that rim light uh, on the birds, and I love the fact that we've got these two birds against uh, that darkened background, so you've got that really great contrast that makes them pop, but at the same time, this guy's just perhaps a little grumpy. I don't know. That passed, and then I found the image that I ended up being my pick, my select, my final image, and you can see it's dramatically different, and that's not because the light changed. Of course, I worked on it. Uh, just the biggest change here would have been the, uh, the white balance. And I think it's not so much that the D810 you know, misread the white balance in auto white balance in the previous image. I generally you know, leave my A10 in auto white balance. It does a great job. Um, but here, just to really capture and convey the mood, I think you, know, you could go two different ways with an image like this too. You know, it's clearly winter time. You've got some northern birds in their winter plumage. Nothing wrong with kind of conveying a little bit of a a cold feel or a cold look to the image. But I really like the pair of birds here. It kind of makes it interesting, you know, almost a little heart shape. It's like these doves or lovebirds, uh, these ptarmigan. And really just wanted to convey more of that warm feeling, especially, you know, to maybe play up a little bit that rim light that was there to begin with. And just to focus in on that warmth. And again, you can see that the two to 500 as well, you know, if you're at a longer focal length, um, that focal plane is quite narrow as well too. So you get this great out of focus or bokeh area in the background. And so you don't have to be shooting at f1.4 uh, to get great out of focus areas. Again, with the longer piece of glass, this is at 5.6. So again, this is the two to five wide open. Did a little bit of post-processing there. And that's probably my keeper shot of the whole trip, to be honest. I think once we got up there and I knew I had that on the card, I was just, everything else was uh, a bonus. But we did keep on shooting and kept on exploring. A lot of these haven't been uh, touched or worked on. But this next image as well, too, uh, again, have done nothing with this yet. I'm not sure what I'll do with it, but I did want to kind of get while we were up there, take advantage of the, the location and get kind of that stacked mountain kind of shot or that kind of a look as well. Uh, and you can see we've got a lot of haze going on here. Maybe I'll walk through later on what I would do uh, uh, to correct or try to work with that haze in a different uh, post. But in this case, uh, at minus 20 degrees Celsius, a lot of that haze is actually ice crystals in the air. Uh, as well, when you get closer down to the ground, we have we're still close to Whitehorse and a fairly dense population center for a uh, relatively uh, less populated place like the Yukon. And we've got a lot of folks that are using uh, wood burning stoves, wood fired stoves. And that definitely that wood smoke is a phenomenon in the middle of the winter as well too. You can smell it when you're out there, when you're near people's homes. And you can even see here off in the distance, it clearly looks like we have a few uh, specific residences that are visible as well too. Just had a couple of options there. Um, another image, I think 
from this point on, I've essentially switched my second lens that I brought up on the trip. I tried to pack light given that we were going to be hiking. Uh, and given that I knew that one of my lenses for sure was going to be the two to five, that does tend to, uh, you know, uh, take up a lot of the weight budget and uh, tried to be lightweight besides the two to five. And so here I had switched to uh, a vintage 35 1.4. AIS Nikon lens, so it's all manual focus, and I just really loved the light hitting the snow on this tree and the ice that was forming. Uh, but I did spend a, a fair amount of time getting down to this tree, putting myself into position, and trying to play around with where exactly the light would fall in the frame and how it would react with the image. I did spend a lot of time, it was somewhat precarious walking down a, a snowy slope and clinging onto branches and all that stuff and for whatever it's worth I took uh, you know a couple dozen shots here this is probably my favorite but at the end of the day I'm still not entirely crazy with the composition I wanted to have the mountains in the background and all that uh, but I think it's just a little bit too locked in perhaps uh, anyways I haven't spent any time in post on this and maybe there's some cropping I can do to try to tell the story a little bit better just a few other examples here as well too with that uh, 1970s era Nikon 35 1.4 would have stopped it down significantly for these landscape shots but this older lens is still really 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 sharp it resolves just fine it's a you know a professional level uh, piece of glass from a few decades ago and I think generally when you're talking about you know cameras having a lifespan of 18 months or something like that there's always the latest and the greatest uh, but definitely if you're investing in glass and quality glass it's gonna last you a long time and it's gonna be an investment uh, well worth it so those haven't really been worked on at all either um, and again, a couple images here from that windy summit. I think, again, apologies for the video quality at the top there too, but uh, we'll work on that in the future. But it was, you know, pretty windy and cold. And it sounds like uh, my photo editor assistant here might need a little break. I'll let her go. Alrighty, so that's time out for Bitsy there. She's off researching where our next photo adventure will be. Maybe. Um, anyway, so at the top of Grey Mountain here, uh, again, just kind of going back to that first image, talking about the, the nature and the quality of light in the north, and you know this one with this great side lighting right at sunrise, really revealing so much of the texture in the side of the mountain. I just you know find it just captivating. I really enjoy that. And then once we got up to the top a little bit further, again this is honestly it's noon, it's midday here, and if you can kind of read in the background, we've got that horizon line. I kind of wanted to have a little bit of context and not just focus on this piece of ice. Um, we've got the sun, and this is midday sun. This is as high as that sun is getting above the horizon in the Yukon. I think that's just magical. I love it. And anyways, I just decided to keep playing with that uh, 35 1.4 lens that I've got. And certainly if you wanted to have more of the image in focus, you would stop down a bit or even do some focus stacking uh, to try to really maximize depth of field at a close uh, working distance like this. But in this case, I really was just trying to see and play around with creating a little bit of a, a dreamy effect and let the out of focus areas uh, kind of turn into these wonderful little bokeh bubbles. And you know, there's a lot of uh, classic lenses and glass that really does a great job with these out of focus areas. And I think, yeah, this lens is no exception. Clearly there are trade-offs for that as well too, that wide open you're soft in the corners and you're getting a little bit of uh, distortion in the corners as well too, no doubt about it. But when you, yeah, again the lens is just a tool and when you know what it does you can put it to creative use like this too. Uh, so again similar to the, the ptarmigan shots that I talked about before, you could go a diff few different ways with post-processing here. Um, and I've done that as well too, where you've got one where it's kind of more just a a cool look obviously you're talking about ice so I shifted the white balance a little bit more uh, to the cooler tones as well uh, but personally my my select for this one of the final image that I would choose would be this one that really you know clearly I think the ice conveys cold on its own you don't really need to tone it 
super blue necessarily and at least in this case I want to have that contrast between the uh, the warm sunlight shining through and the ice in the foreground kind of telling that story uh, and the final image I had in this series as well too not worked on at all but just speaking of the windswept top on Grey Mountain there too it's just the, the wind over time just carves these wonderful little ridges into the snow and I think it's it's pretty cool and the snow at this point is just this like sugar crystal powder um, so yeah I'm not sure what I'll do with this one but I had a whole series of just kind of different textures um, so again this was just you know a personal uh, side project just keeping keeping busy staying creative and going on a little hike with a fellow photographer I think it's a great way to uh, stay curious to stay motivated to challenge yourself and again packing two lenses I was going for you know a, a range of different images to tell the story of that day of the hike and we've got some textures we've got some uh, story about the uh, the ice that was up there the weather we've got some just typical you know wider landscapes uh, some wildlife shots that were just it was awesome to have uh, those ptarmigan cross our path there too and just a few other examples again these haven't been worked on at all but just talking about what you can do with a two to five you can really zoom in and catch wildlife or you can kind of uh, use that reach and put it to use with things that are further away like long distance landscape work um, so yeah so that's kind of just a, a look at some of the favorite images from that hike and hope you enjoyed kind of uh, watching over the shoulder here and seeing what some of the results were uh, stay tuned for further adventures in the future. All right.